Viewers, you're with the hard facts from the CNN News 18 and Federal Bank Primetime Studios. Viewers, it is fast becoming an epidemic. Unverified, mostly political news breaks from dodgy sources. It is almost immediately mainstreamed by political parties and used to target their opponents. A querulsome controversy almost always ensues and accountability is demanded, usually in the form of clarifications or then calls for resignation from topmost echelons of a political party or government, as the case may be. If the story has a high public interest quotient, it triggers protests. Within a few days, the twist takes place. The story begins to have a tangible impact on public behavior and attitude. Only for the story to be fact-checked and debunked. The clarification only has the effect of confusing the public. And sadly, it also shakes the people's faith in the victim rather than the perpetrator of the fakery. Over the last few weeks, and especially in the build-up to the Lok Sabha election and its immediate aftermath, three such clear instances of fake narratives being propagated to influence public behavior have been outed. Unfortunately, the damage they caused to the party targeted by the disinformation was consequential. Let me walk you through these instances, viewers, and you will realize how some of you have been misled. The first claim was made by the opposition that the BJP was seeking char so par to scrap reservations. Viewers, what was the modus operandi that was used? A video of Amit Shah was circulated where he was purportedly claiming that when the BJP would come to power for the third time, it would scrap reservations. This was a complete fabrication, viewers. The video was a deep fake. A case was registered against the Maharashtra Youth Congress handle. Damage was of course done, and you know how it played out, viewers, on the mind of the voter in the election. A large number of BJP's ardent Dalit and non yadav vote bank deserted them. They lost seats. They lost a majority. Let's have a look at another claim, viewers. The mobile OTP generated, it was claimed to hack an EVM in North Mumbai constituency to swing the election in favor of the Shinde Sena candidate. All of this, viewers, was based on an article in Midday which was aggressively tweeted by India Bloc parties. This all happened, viewers, just last week. But what was the fact? Midday puts out a corrigendum, owning up to, in its own words, inadvertent misinformation. He said it made a mistake that yes, a mobile phone was taken into the counting center, but the other part of the story, which suggested that the person who took the mobile inside, a relative of the winning candidate from the Shinde Sena, operationalized his mobile, generated an OTP to hack the EVM to win the election or rig the election. That didn't happen. Viewers, as you know, around the world this story echoed. In fact, viewers, the opposition used this story to even incorporate a remark made by Musk, Elon Musk, on the state of affairs in the US to come out and say, look, everyone is against EVM, scrap them, let's go back to paper ballots. Viewers, the opposition also suggested that all other 240 seats that the BJP won were also because of fraud. Viewers, think about it. Again, misinformation was used, mainstream, normalized, fake news, call it what you want to. Another claim, viewers, large-scale irregularities buried by the neat 
testing panel, the NTA. This is an allegation that is being made. Of course, there are certain places where viewers, there have been shortcomings. But what was the modus operandi, a video claiming that look, my particular exam was mismanaged and I was cheated of a particular score, was liberally treated viewers by the India block. What was the fact? It now turns out that the student lied and filed a plea in court based on forged documents. The High Court today has called it an unfortunate state of affairs and pulled up the student, saying that the NDA has every right to prosecute this student. Viewers, that student, we are being told on your screens, was going to be part of the campaign that was going to be launched by the Congress and other India bloc parties to attack the government. Viewers, given that in most of the cases, the government or the ruling party has been at the receiving end, the BJP has hit out hard at their opponents. Of course, this isn't to say that the BJP has never indulged in being loose with the facts to score a point against their opponents. But nonetheless, here's the BJP's reaction to the latest bit of fakery concerning the way the neat examinations were conducted and that fakery was amplified. Listen. कई घंटे हो चुके हैं परंतु प्रियंका वाड्रा जी जिन्होंने आयुषी पटेल के नाम पर और आयुषी पटेल के वीडियो के साथ झूठ फैलाने का कृत्य किया पूरे नीट के विषय पर और जब इस आयुषी पटेल का सच सामने निकलकर आ चुका है हाई कोर्ट के द्वारा कि ये व्यक्ति न केवल झूठ बोल रही थी बल्कि फर्जी कागजों को उसने कोर्ट में जमा किया था तब प्रियंका वाड्रा जी अब मौन है कई घंटे हो गए ना उन्होंने वो ट्वीट डिलीट किया है ना उन्होंने माफी मांगी व्यूअर्स एज अ जर्नलिस्ट इफ आई ट्वीट मटीरियल दट इज नॉट बिन वेरीफाइड अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ यू आर विद इन योर राइट टू हॉल मी ओवर द कोर्ट्स routinely viewers journalists are hauled over the coals they are expected even with their limited reach expected viewers and this is an expectation which is legitimate to be accurate with the facts why shouldn't this expectation extend to those who argue our case in parliament i e viewers the politicians do they have a carte blanche to spread all sorts of fakery to misinform all of us to make the wrong decisions which might be against the national interest think about that viewers no action is taken journalists are prosecuted youtubers are prosecuted a whole bunch of opinion makers are prosecuted but viewers politicians get away now the concerns around the normalization of disinformation are real and are being aggressively flagged up as threats to democracy i'm not talking through my hat viewers tonight i'm going to put out hard facts that show that this kind of fakery is the greatest threat to democracy and i'm not saying this viewers misinformation has been flagged as the top global risk over the next 2 years the 2 year period was chosen because there are several democracies that are going to be going to elections after india of course the two biggest or best known England and USA the mother of all democracies so to speak we'll see elections and the threat of misinformation has been identified as the top global risk above extreme weather and war viewers even war the source of this red flag is the world economic forum 2024 global risks report that's the source India highest at the risk of AI fueled misinformation and disinformation globally with regard to upcoming elections again viewers the world economic forum 2024 global risk report based on threat perceptions deep analysis came to this conclusion and we now know viewers that this conclusion was spot on there are consequences to fake news Let me take you through another hard fact. Right before the 2016 US election, the top 20 fake news stories that were circulating on social media received more engagement. So that's liking, sharing, commenting than the top 20 factual news stories that were on social media. 
can you imagine, viewers, the reach of fake news is more than actual news. The source is the UCF lecturer, Chrysalis Wright, member of the UN's Communications Coordination Committee. Her report, viewers. An additional like to a Facebook page that disseminated fake news led on average to an electoral gain of 0.145 votes for populist parties. Now imagine, viewers, how many likes go on these particular misinformation news reports. The source here is a peer review study on Italian polls published in ScienceDirect.com, viewers. You can look it up. Last but not least, viewers, in countries with low HDI human development index levels, respondents reported disinformation and fake news as having already affected their political life and expected it to do so in the next election. The source is April 2024, viewers, Ipsos UNESCO survey on the impact of online disinformation and hate speech. I think I made my case, viewers, how pernicious. But viewers, today we must hold those who are spreading this fake news to account especially those political parties. So let's open this up and let me engage first with the two political panelists here or those that have an orientation towards politics. So Sanju Varma, let me bring you in first. Sanju Varma and uh, Mr. Poonawala, Tehseen Poonawala. Tehseen Poonawala picked three or four very consequential, as you saw, examples and they're playing out. I want to ask you, is the India bloc that you're sympathetic to normalizing this very, very dangerous threat, global risk, the top one, to win elections, curry favor with people, try to game the system? Sir, all good evening. Thank you for having me on the show. I do believe fake news is a massive problem in India. I do believe, however, that the BJP and the government uses it much more than the other opposition parties do. And there are several examples. Amit Shah ji is on record saying in uh, Rajasthan that Akhilesh Yadav ji slapped Mulayam Singh Yadav ji. It was not true, but the news was made viral and anything we can do, we can make it viral. Yes, there is one which is deliberate fake news as the BJP spreads, for example, on Nehru ji, etc. Nehruji lost an election to Sardar Patel and therefore Sardar Patel was to become the first Prime Minister, but Gandhi intervened. The Prime Minister said this in Parliament, on the floor of Parliament, it's not true. Or what you're talking about, the examples of the India Alliance, which may be, you know, you look at a lady, Ayushi, she, a girl, Ayushi, a student, you believe it's true. Later on, it turns out it may not be 100% true, but the government's not come out with clarification. So there's bona fide and there's malafide. There's a bona fide mistake, which could lead to a fake news and there's a malafide which the BJP does in particular. Now let's come to the, 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 the substance to it. The substance to it is we need to now be in a situation where government gets out of news control. Government stops dictating what to do in news, what is right and what is wrong news. And independent bodies, both for uh, media and for social media, take charge and help decimate this information. Unfortunately, what's happened, and I have to tell you, Rahul, with a lot of disappointment. For example, let me take the example of COVID. Numerous, numerous shows hosted by your colleagues on your Hindi channel were pulled down by your broadcasting association. Numerous and fined. Numerous for spreading fake news. Not just fake, but hate news. It's dangerous. Colleagues of yours from another channel repeatedly indulge in hate news and fake news. Repeatedly. And they are felicitated by the government. One of them was for the Honorable Prime Minister's swearing in ceremony. So I think we have to be very clear. Fake news, hate news is dangerous. I'm not saying that it's not been done on this side. Of course, it has been done. You have all these YouTubers on this side. And I discussed this with Smita Ji on her podcast, for which Anand and I got told that there have been YouTubers who spread misinformation. And that system, but a system of people involved in media, whether social media, mainstream media, they need to solve it without government or opposition okay. interference. So, I think that is the so, only so solution. You used a phrase, BJP uses it much more. Now, Tessie Punala, the hard facts that I put out for you are all attributed to certain sources. Where is the empirical evidence, source-based data, that gives me this confidence that the accusation that you have made is based on facts? True, because no such data is done. Ah. I agree with you. 
viewers and therefore i agree with you and so, therefore, so, and therefore so please allow me to please allow me please allow me therefore you have to look at therefore so, we need organizations that are run by media so to look second. at data and pull them up all oh, right it is a fact so it is I, a fact i, I know you've never i know one fact or checker or i know one it fact is, checker is, oh that guy is a, that guy is not we not we don't go get no, into who am i talking that about? guy has led to people i know who you're talking about that who? guy we don't that he's he's gone after me as well so please who is this leave them out. i i am not named anybody we don't need we don't need these fact checkers we need people from the industry okay. to come in and Viewers, step up let me tell you something i can right now accuse tehseen punawala of misleading all of you his opening statement sure. was bjp does it more there's bona fide and there's malafide they do more malafide and then he immediately came out and to his credit corrected himself by saying i have no data because it's not been cataloged so viewers we must disregard that part of the statement what we have however are three consequential normalization of fake news that i have shown you viewers which have actually had a consequential impact now i want the bjp to respond to tehsin punawala i'm not But saying you two examples i'm not saying yeah okay, i'm please? not saying i'm not saying that the bjp doesn't do it i'm sure they have their own dirty tricks department i'm sure all political parties need one but you are playing victim today on what grounds Sanju Verma You know Rahul I don't think the BJP uh, uses the victim card as is uh, reportedly made out to be uh, the case uh, but we certainly believe in calling out the bluff of uh, Modi naysayers we believe in calling out the bluff of people who say oh freedom of speech should be absolute and these so called freedom of speech absolutists you know uh, when uh, they are in the dock uh, when they have their back nailed to the wall uh then uh their lies and their house of cards comes crumbling why i'm saying this i'll give you a small example first let me address the big elephant in the room which obviously is the uh midday story uh which came out uh, over the weekend on a sunday you know a large story with a huge headline saying that the mumbai northwest constituency the shinde sena candidate ravindra vaikar won it uh, by a thin margin of 48 votes because Uh, one of his relatives his brother in law to be specific uh, generated an otp via a mobile phone which he had possession of and thereby he influenced the voting pattern so on and so forth now fine midday came out with uh, a piece of uh, garbage that is yellow journalism at its very worst it hit a new low i don't even call midday a magazine or a journal it's a tabloid a trashy tabloid be that as it may look how rahul gandhi jumped into the entire fracas into the entire controversy he immediately jumped in and said evms are nothing but black boxes and the election commission uh, has not done its due in terms of ensuring transparency of the electoral process and whether it is coincident or deliberate elon musk was basically referring to how evms can be hacked in the united states anyone with a modicum of common sense knows that in the united states evms are linked to an operating system they are linked to the internet and hence they can be hacked despite rajiv chandrashekhar who knows more about it than any of us on this panel here he gave a categorical clarification saying that indian evms run on batteries they are not linked to any wired or wireless device or bluetooth or mobile phone or any operating system hence the chances of hacking or manipulating an indian evm is not next to impossible it is impossible okay but look at midday it came out with a small corrigendum and it called it a clarification it did not even call it an apology the government will take action because you know i don't want somebody to be sitting here and saying oh modi government kya kar rahi hai aapki sarkar hai maharashtra mein aapki sarkar kendra mein hai humko jo karna hai hum karenge okay. but where i have a problem is why is it that rahul gandhi always decides to side with the support stand in solidarity with the other side on the other side of the fence which always propagates fake news and does it with malafide intent does it willfully does it deliberately okay. does it repeatedly does it consistently without an iota of regret that is basically the problem that needs to be addressed and i'll tell you just in 10 seconds okay don't think the modi government has not been doing the needful in terms of reining in these malafide malcontent elements who peddle and endorse fake news okay who was made the chairman of the parliamentary standing committee on data and information technology do you know that rahul yes i want to ask tasin punawala do you know the name of the gentleman 
Tell us the He's name. He's a Shashi Tharoor. Shashi yes. Tharoor. Wonderful. And Shashi, Shashi Tharoor. Tharoor was the biggest okay. impediment. Okay. In, please let me finish the scene. You had your say. You okay. can debate. Okay, 10 more seconds. I need to open this up. Shashi Tharoor. Shashi Tharoor. Can you keep quiet now? Thank you. Shashi Tharoor was one of the biggest obstacles. Why is this man talking okay, unnecessarily? Okay, please, uh, Tazeen, look, just one second, you'll have she your say. She asked me the name. I Doctor, gave the name. Yeah, you, she, then, yes, yeah, she, that's you have all. the name, she, now keep quiet. Now just keep quiet now, relax. I just want then, to add a caveat. Yes, I just want to add a caveat. I want them to speak. No, I, I'm always not interested the lead, in listening to your caveat. Somebody from it's your okay, position. we all know that we're not dumb. Thank okay. you. Let's exactly. Move. Yes. Yeah, okay, go on. Uh, very quickly, please. Thank you. Yes, 30 more seconds. Yes, very quickly. Without getting bhashan from Tahseen, Shashi Tharoor was one of the biggest impediments. Shashi Tharoor was one of, one of the biggest obstacles in getting, okay. or okay. should I say not getting the personal data protection bill passed okay. because that still has not become an act. Okay. Shashi Tharoor, okay. the likes of Jairam Ramesh, who talk about free speech, okay. talk about data protection, did not want this to become an act in parliament. Okay, okay. Let me open this up. You know, at the heart, of course, is that should the government be even getting into policing, etc., etc. Dr. Ranganathan and Smita Prakash are here with us. Dr. Ranganathan, yes, you've been raising your hand. Go ahead, make your point. I just want to make one quick clarification. Musk got it wrong. Even the systems that are employed, the EVMs that are employed, if you go to the website of the manufacturer, they say they're not connected to the internet. So. I think he was really talking through his hat, and he is, of course, known to do so. He might be brilliant in one <laughs> field, but he's quite the rabble rouser in the other. Yes, doctor. Uh, good evening, Rahul, and good evening to my fellow panelists. I think uh, uh, to give uh, Musk his due, uh, he was talking about, he was, uh, I think, replying to uh, uh, a news instance that was tweeted by, I think, Kennedy. Yeah, uh, that's right. And they were talking Robert about Kennedy. EVMs. Yeah, they are talking about the network connected EVMs that are used in, I think, one of the states. Yeah. So Musk wasn't talking about our EVM yeah. uh, that is completely disconnected to the, the cyber world. But uh, be that as it may, uh, Rahul, I want to come back to this topic because it's very important. And of course, Smita hasn't had, uh, yet had her say. Uh, you know, we live in a world where Normally, we would like to believe what we see, but unfortunately, what we see is written by those who see what they believe. This is the absolute truth. Agenda is all pervasive. Everyone, everyone has been at the receiving end of either generating fake news or spreading it inadvertently or deliberately. Tessin is quite right that this is so all pervasive that every politician, every political party has spread fake news. The only difference with Tessin is that he has not commented that the biggest fake news spreader has been Rahul Gandhi himself, so much so that he's been castigated even by the Supreme Court. And Rahul Gandhi was asked to apologize for something, saying something that he claimed Supreme Court said about Chaukidar Chore. Supreme Court clearly didn't. Even after 10 years, Rahul Gandhi continues to spread the fake news about the fact that he says that Narendra Modi asked or said that he is going to put 15 lakhs of the money that he receives as black money from Switzerland into every Indian's account. Narendra Modi never said it. Even today, Rahul Gandhi refuses to apologize for his lie that 30,000 crores in Rafal were given to Anil Ambani when only 9% of the money was given and Hal also was one of the sherries. So every political party does it. Rahul Gandhi does it. Okay, fine. Tessin will not talk about it. That's all right. But uh, just five seconds, Tessin is again wrong about Sardar Patel and Jawaharlal Nehru because it is uh, uh, in historical records that 12 out of 15 uh, right. Pradesh Congress committees actually chose Sardar Patel despite Gandhi having made his choice of Nehru clear. And Rajendra Prasad said, Yet again, Gandhi has chosen the glamorous Nehru over his trusted lieutenant. So well. these are hist historical facts. Now, uh, Tessin, I didn't interrupt you. This is not a debate, Rahul, just one minute, uh, about discussing who has spread fake news or who hasn't. Everyone has, that is beyond doubt. Are we going to do something about it? Should we do something about it? That's the question. And there I'd like to say that in fake news, and I've been a recipient of that as late as uh, just two weeks, where on Smita's podcast, where Taseem was also there, my call for rehabilitating 7 lakh Kashmiri Hindus safely and securely, uh, securely was construed by the zombie army as a call for genocide. 
what can one do about it well how preposterous and bizarre is this fake news and narrative being spread so either we can sit back and say we are helpless or some action has to be taken now who is going to take that action i think the responsibility should lie on the individual there possibly has to be a quick action by the courts as if if somebody is defamed that person doesn't have to wait for 10 years okay. for the law to take its course okay smita prakash since two people have taken this conversation back to your doorstep let me bring you in since you seem to be the fount of all of this <laughs> not fakery <laughs> but let me just ask you smita thank prakash you. look what is I the, hope what, not. what is the consequence of the normalization of fakery should somebody like for example today priyanka gandhi vadra come out and say look i'm i owe an apology this was maybe she can raise the bar i don't know if everyone's doing it maybe she can set that example should she come out and say look i'm sorry inadvertent error withdraw it delete my tweet whatever it is look i think the problem also arises is that when these politicians reach a particular uh, stage in their careers they have handlers around them and the handlers will always tell these leaders don't apologize because once you apologize for a fake statement or something that you said which turned out to be fake then every statement that you make hitherto will be deemed fake oh. or will be viewed from that prism so as a result of that they just let it pass ki jaane do लोग भूल जाएंगे एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ दैट वी द कंज्यूमर्स ऑफ दिस fakery we are the ones who suffer the most i think uh, it is uh, especially social media i think it has become a breeding ground of uh, fake news of disinformation misinformation and that gets amplified more and more on social media anand just mentioned it anand and tasim were both on that podcast and uh, on the podcast anand just talked about kashmiri pandits and uh, he said something like there should be uh, uh, an israel like Uh, solution to it to which immediately tehseen and uh, the other panelists who you have on your panel several times said no no this is not the case and we all discussed it none of us agreed with anand but willy nilly anand was deemed by a fake news uh, supposedly somebody who bust fake news who who you refuse to mention but then tehseen conjured up the name i mean those who are on social media you know exactly what you were trying to hint at what they seen perceived what i understood and what anand was talking about i think we all know what we are doing but here is a person who's supposed to be busting fake news he gets funds crowd funds uh, for busting fake news but what he did was a dog whistle and as a result of that that gained uh, uh, you know right. uh, momentum and it went global so you know fake news so when uh, when sanju i'm sorry sanju but i have to say this when you say humko jo karna hai hum karenge what actually happens is that you were there your party was there for 10 years and to say now that you know we couldn't do this the it act and laws are at a nascent stage and it couldn't happen because of a certain minister who came from the opposition party no now that just doesn't cut ice because 10 years okay, you could do bring something in, you about could it push through so many laws 10 seconds so, sanju on my response 10 yes. seconds yes, yes. Rahul. please rahul when how can i respond in 10 seconds smita has made a pertinent uh, remark give me at least 45 seconds okay i'm running no, out of time these people here ask no, no. me to take a break because there's a no i'll, I'll just finish very quickly hmm. you know uh, smita uh, your point is taken on board that the government should not be making excuses but i think when you say ki government ko aur karna chahiye you forget the fact that this is the same government which in 2021 amended the it act of 2000 and it guidelines of 2011 and ensure that any user on social media who has more than 50 lakh subscribers if he or she posts defamatory content he or she will be criminally liable and okay. at that time i did not But see any free okay. speech absolutist supporting the modi government okay. we of course made it into a law what okay. are you saying we okay. made it into time a law smita time out time out i just need to now take a break yes, look one no 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 i'm right really not out of time i just want to say something viewers right. zombie army will be after you okay, no. I, i don't want zombie army to be after you no me zombie <laughs> army they, i wish they would wake up anyhow And morality no, viewers if politicians think that morality they can surrender at the altar of expediency then that's not setting the right example because then all of us can follow suit also and that doesn't make for an honest democracy viewers so maybe someone needs to make that start
The ball is in the court of the leader who has spread this fake news. It's not too late. I'll take a short break.